Hi, I'm Lucas. Hi, I'm Richard. And Richard uh, comes from the greatest communist country in the world, uh, the People's Republic of China. And Lucas comes from uh, Germany, the birthplace of Marxism. And for the past two months, we've been studying communism. Uh, we've been studying it here at Hotchkiss. Yeah. And uh, Lucas did a thorough research on Marxism. He read a lot of his essays, including uh, the Communist Manifesto, the German ideology, and other uh, political economic uh, scripts. And Richard uh, learned about the history of communism. He read uh, Lenin. He read uh, imperialism as the highest stage of capitalism. Uh, and we went around and we asked different people about what they thought about communism. And we reached a really exciting conclusion. So we talked to Mr. Moon, we talked to Dr. Martin, we talked to different students. So we can't wait for you to hear this and uh, enjoy. Enjoy the rest of the film. Have a good day. Peace, mates. According to Google, communism is a political ideology that derives from the German philosopher Karl Marx. Yet, as we read Marx and interviewed both teachers and faculty, we realized that we had a major problem. Ready? Yeah. All right, so we're talking about um, Marx, right? And yeah. Marxian economics. Okay, so as I have said many times, Marx has a theory of capitalism. He does not have a theory of communism. Pause. Most of Marx's work is a critique of capitalism and the problems of a capitalist system of production. That's why there are so many different interpretations of what communism is, as Marx never fully explained it. So he uh, separates, there's the means of production. Right? These are machinery, equipment, stuff like that. And then there's uh, labor power. And so when you put these things together, that's how you make stuff, right? And so Marx conceives as the production process as combining these two things. And in capitalism, in capitalism, the thing that's interesting here is that labor power is commodified. In other words, I as a worker sell my labor power to the capitalist. So the capitalist owns the labor power. He doesn't own or she doesn't, Mr. the character is Mr. Munfix. Uh, Mr. Moneybags doesn't own the worker, like would her current slave mode of production, right? But the uh, capitalist owns the labor power. And it's here that sort of Marx sort of says there's a sleight of hand that takes place. And that the outputs or the value of your outputs will exceed the value of your inputs, right? So that the value has expanded. So in this process, you have a value expansion. And who owns the value expansion? The capitalist. The capitalist owns the value expansion, right? When Marx talks about workers being exploited, it's not about being badly treated or abused in any way, but it's the fact that the, the value that their labor power produces is not theirs. They don't own it. The surplus value accrues to the capitalist. To solve the problem of increasing inequality, Marx proposed an international workers' movement where the workers overthrow the proletariat and collectivize the means of production. So communism essentially, as I understand it, would be an extreme version of redistribution of wealth. It's a very appealing ideology, of course. Mm -hmm. It's a very appealing, especially for for the lower class where you can yeah. trade in uh, or you can trade in your freedoms for some extra cash. Mm. Karl Marx argues that in an ideal communist society, one can do one thing today and another thing tomorrow. One can hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, rear the cattle in the evening, and criticize after dinner without ever becoming a hunter, herdsman, fisherman, or critique. He talks about from each according to one's ability to each according to one's need. I think that at the core is the principle of communism, um, but what that looks like in terms of practice in society is not particularly well developed because Marx spends most of his writing talking about um, what capitalism is and mm. how it's exploited and how it needs to be deconstructed. 
So yeah, so he leaves us without a clear pathway toward what is communism. Um, but I will come out and say there's never been a communist country in the world. Yet there have been countries that have tried to be communist, or at least that have called themselves communist. In 1917, Lenin uh, and his Bolshevik party overthrew the provisional government in Russia and established what they called the first communist state in the world. Lenin does radically change and deviate from what Marx was talking about. Uh, and then the system that is set up in the Soviet Union, particularly with state-centered and one party, goes against some of the main fabric of what Marx was talking about in the Communist Manifesto. Organization run by a few people is going to tell the majority what to do is not ideally communism. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the root of the term communism, commune, is very democratic. Ideologically, I'm not, I'm not sure Stalin, for example, was a true Marxist Leninist. It was a system that had been bastardized over the, over the decades and um, ended up being a far cry from what I think it had initially hoped to be. When I went to the Soviet Union for the first time in 1983, there was only one Western product that was available in the Soviet Union, that was uh, Pepsi-Cola. I remember waiting in line for about an hour to get a loaf of bread one day. It was a matter of time. Um, the economic stagnation, um, particularly in the 70s in the Soviet Union, wasn't going to get any better. Um, there was nothing. I don't, I don't think there was anything that could have been done. In 1991, after a serious failed reform, the Soviet Union collapsed. The collapse of the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc did is it allows now people to go back and actually look at Marx a little more objectively. The failure and loss of the Eastern European communist system was not necessarily a reflection of the victory of the capitalist system. The failure of the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe um, may very well have been its own failure. We've learned that in order to understand Marxism, you have to read Marx's critique of capitalism and not his theory of communism. We've learned that Marx does not leave us with a sufficient framework to understand of how a communist society would actually function and what it would look like. We've also learned that you have to separate Marx's theory from the history of communism, since many of the regimes that have called themselves communists, in fact, go against many of the central tenets of Marxism.